So we finished the arrhythmias, like with the that there's a problem with the initiation. Now we're getting to the conduction problems, and those are AV blocks. Okay, so AV blocks. And first, AV block is a very simple one and not dangerous. You don't have to be worried about this one at all. It's the AV block. First degree, first degree. It's just PQ is a bit elongated. It's big, bit takes a bit longer. Nothing serious. It's just prolonged. And you look with that and you're fine. Okay. So that's a first degree block. Just prolonged PQ interval. Prolonged. Then you're having a second de degree block. And second degree, second degree block, AV block. You can have also uh, like SA node blocks, but forget those. Okay, these are the important ones. And second degree AV block, uh, you divide it into two types, remember. So basically I'm giving you at the end four types, okay? So this divides into Mobitz 1, Mobitz 1, and Mobitz 2. And Mobitz 2 is the dangerous one. Mobitz 1 is not, and it has other synonymous like type one so it's degree second degree type one or Weckenbach Weckenbach and those are Weckenbach periods and how, how do you how does it look like it's not dangerous you're fine with it and the thing is that the PQ prolongates and as it goes longer and longer and longer and then it drops okay so the PQ until it elongates and then there is no conduction and again so basically you should imagine like like the av node gets tired more and more and more and then it's not able to conduct to the ventricles but when it's not able to con conduct it can recharges in a way like like you know regenerates and it's able again to conduct okay so basically what you see is this this is normal then it gets a bit longer even longer, I'm going to exaggerate. And now there's going to be drop, nothing. And again, short, bit longer, even longer. And then again, drops, nothing. So this is a Mobitz one. And it's fine. You don't have to worry about that. The one you have to worry about is Mobitz two. Because this one is totally unpredictable in a way. And... Uh, basically what happens is you're have, there's no elongation and suddenly nothing and sometimes it's like every second okay yeah every second but always you see uh, with there is QRS you see P in front of it okay that's the, the uh, that's the way how you can distinguish it from AV node uh, third degree block, okay? But this is over here and over here. It's dangerous because you can have a syncope. So you can have an Adam Stokes. And that's why in this case, you always implant a artificial pacemaker machine that controls your, your atriums and ventricles. So, so implant pacemaker don't wait so that's AV uh, AV block second degree second type type 2 Mobitz 2 dangerous again driving a car could be lethal for you if you faint and third degree it's a full block so there is no communication between atriums and, and ventricles so they don't communicate and they're living on their own. They are having their own lives, okay? And when I ask students sometimes, 
what will be on ECG, they will tell me there's no QRS complex. No, that's very wrong. Why? If you have no QRS, you have no contraction and you have no beat and you're dead. So there are contraction, of course. But guess what the frequency of the, the ventricle is going to be? It's going to be slow. As I said, it's going to be like 40 or 50. Okay. So basically the way how you draw this is for P, you do points like this, that it's regular. That's from the SA node. And then for QRS, you can do points, you know, it's a slower frequency like this. And if I will draw it now in blue, then over here, it's at the same time. So you won't see it now. Here's a P, here's a QRS, P, P, QRS, P, P, QRS, P, QRS. Okay. So you see uh, there are totally, th these are P's. They have their own frequency. And here are, here is the contraction of the ventricles, which is the final pulse you're going to feel on, on the ra radial artery. Okay. So it could be like, I don't know, 40 beats per minute, for example. Okay. Totally independent, fully independent. Okay. So th those are AV blocks and just a very fast, fast comment on the branch blocks. Okay, so because the AV block means a full block. Okay, and now because as I said, you got two Tavara branches, you got the left, left one and right one. And now let's get to uh, the last one. And those are the blocks, the branch blocks. And basically, we, I'm going to mention only two. And there you got also hemi blocks. Okay, but remember, there's a left bundle branch block and right bundle branch block. And they both have the same thing. They have, they both are having uh, what we call a bizarre QRS complex. So, so QRS is widened for both of them. QRS is widened, widened, and also they have a negative T. And for you, the most important one is the left one, because the left one is crucial because it masks the STEMI or non-STEMI infarction. If, if, if you're having LBB for many years and now you're having infarction, you're having a pain, but they will do an ECG. And the only thing they can see there is the LBB. They cannot tell you that they cannot say, oh, they don't see. You're blinded with ECG. So, so basically take it as this. If you're having a pa patient with a pain on the chest and you do an ECG and there's LBB, B, you will send him to the cath lot immediately, okay? Because ECG won't help you. So you think of the worst, you're sending for catheterization. So, so LBB, left bundle branch block, is very important to think of every time. And basically, ischemias and infarctions, they are the causes of LBBB. So basically, he can, he can be fully healthy, and now he's having an infarction, and he's having an LBBB to it, okay? Yeah, as a result, every time there is a chest pain and com in combination with left bundle branch block, cath lab. OK, and the the difference between these two is the location where you see it in what, what leads. So if you see it in first lead, AVL lead and V5 and V6, which are the all of these leads are the ones pointing towards the left heart. And if you'll see this, that's the left So you see widened QRS. And you, if you see in these leads, you know it's the left bundle branch block. And if you see this in let's say only two of them, and that is V1 and V2, because these are the ones looking on the right, mainly on the V1, V2. So if you can see in the V1, you can see sort of, anyways, it's widened again, the QRS. And in the V2, typically, uh, again, like the, like this one. So then it's, you know, it's the right bundle branch block. Okay. Yeah. So, so these are the bundle branch blocks, 
not so important for this year for you, but in cardiology, I'm sure they will ask you for that. And remember, LBB, MI, that's crucial, okay? So that was for the intro, basic intro, and let's go very fast to the graphs, okay? So I, I got, uh, now we're gonna be cardiologists and I'm gonna try, try to diagnose what you learned today, okay? Good. So, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.